what we got here today, I'm Keeper, and that's Rebel. Okay, we're going to be, uh, uh, today is the 15th of October, and we're going to be talking about a recent event uh, that we helped run. Um, was an open play uh, called Oops3-Net, Not Enough Time. Uh, there's an open play that uh, EMR puts on on a regular basis, and this particular EM, uh, open play at EMR Event Park in New Milford, we helped set up all the games, and we ran the games for the day. Um, you want to start us off on some of your thoughts, like the weather. Sure. It's a gorgeous day. Well, first things first, you know, thanks to EMR for letting us uh, pull this off. Uh, and it's our third one, but I think it's gotten better over time. We hope. And, oh, yeah. I, well, everything I heard was positive, so. But uh, the first thing I heard, the first thing was great about this was, was the weather. This was the best weather we had. So, this I, was, that third, three times is the best weather. <laughs> uh, the first time it rained us out. Uh, second time so it was. People still showed up. Yeah, and people still showed up. And the second time was cold and a little bit of rainy. And swamp. And, swamp, and it was very sloppy, and it rained like the yeah. two weeks before. Uh, it very rained cold. the night before. Yeah, and it was very cold in that. And we had some, we only had a small crowd. We only had 23 people, but still, all in all, I think it was a good day. Um, yeah. Weather started out good. We had uh, five games planned with a six alternate game that we could put in there. Uh, games were uh, scheduled for 20 minutes. And then we had a 15-minute downtime that people would go off the field, and then we'd turn, start the timer, and then 15 minutes would go back on the field. We tried to sort of run the games pretty uh, straightforward, really quick, you know. Yeah. Yeah, which everybody liked, you know. It was you know, you played the game, got off at a set time, then we got back out there. There was no w waiting around to see, hey, is everybody ready? When you're ready, come on over. No, it's we're. We're ready. Let's go. What was nice is we started the, the day um, going over the rules. Most of the people, and this is what was good, most of the people that were there had were regulars. Yes. Uh, they were what I would call seasoned players. We really didn't have any new players. Some people had never met each other, but most of the people knew each other, and we yeah. had a really good crowd. And it was 10 versus 11. And there was one guy that had never been there before, which was happened to be on our team. So we put him with the group of eleven because we figured new mater new area and stuff like yeah. that. He might have a, a a good time hanging around with people. Um, we started the day off with uh, just a warm up game in the town. It was really good. Yeah, like I, I think next time I think we should just change it to like ten minute warm up game. Because I don't think you should be out there for 20 minutes until the objectives. You know what I mean? Well, I think so, too. Because everybody got their, their game in, and they, we figured out it was pretty even sides, too. It was yeah. pretty good. Uh, like you said, we didn't need to be out there 20 minutes because no. then we could have got into the games a little bit quicker and maybe could have got to maybe the sixth game. Yeah, maybe maybe everybody would to be as tired. Yeah. <laughs> so, give me your thoughts on the first game. Explain what that, you know, the first game was actually a warm-up. I mean, the second game. Start us from there. The, the first objective-based game. Yeah, first objective-based game. Uh, it went differently than last time. It just seemed like there was more movement and everything last time. I, which I don't understand. You think it would be the opposite way because it was, wasn't swampy or nothing. But, uh, like, I, I got some mixed... Uh, said they like, mixed things on there like people enjoyed it, but people also did enjoy it. This game was a laptop game. We had six laptops, three red, three blue, placed in random conditions along a vertical axis, uh, and they came in from both sides. Uh, there was like a combination of either two blue and one red, or two red and one blue okay. split on either side. Uh, and the objective was for you to get it and bring it back to your spawn area. Yeah. Uh, I think people were finding them. It was just ha tough getting to them because the other team was holding them holding them yeah. back. Well, I noticed the I was on the red side, and they like they were mostly central and to the and like to your left, like the helicopter side. 
and nobody was going to all the way to the uh, no man's land side, which was weird. But and and that's well, actually where the uh, blue side got the two laptops. No, there was only one over there. It was red, blue, red on that side. Well, they got a second laptop and they actually brought it in before, but the game actually got was over before the end of before they were able to bring the laptop in. So it was yeah. each I think each team had one laptop each, right? Yeah. They, they had found. And then yeah. right at the end the guy had found the second laptop, but that was before the the game ended before he was able yeah. to bring it over. I the one and, and the thing that was funny, I'm sitting there and I'm watching and I actually went up to check just to make sure I was right. There was a building and six feet off the building was a laptop sitting in the open area. And the guy is laying eight feet away, shooting at the opposite team. Yeah. Another one of our teammates come up and sat next to him, and they shot at each other. And he was on the right side of him, which would make him like seven and, or maybe six and a half feet from this laptop. Yeah. And neither of them saw it. And at the end of the game, I remember telling him, hey, Walk to the right. Walk to the right. And he walked over, and he's like this. Oh, I got his hands in the air. The laptop's right there. <laughs> you know, and he must have been there for, like, half the game shooting yeah. at people. And I'm like, okay, well, you know. Yeah. I, like, I, people were telling me it was good firefights that they were having. But it was just hard. It was just hard to get the objectives. I don't know. Like, I think that's a really interesting area there. Yeah. Um, and I think. It was the it was the first objective game, so I think there the cohesion wasn't there like that I've yeah. seen at the later games. Yeah. So when when they moved on to the next objective game, yeah. then we started well, seeing some stuff. Well, I, I was told by a couple of people on the red side is that like they couldn't see inside the pines, mm -hmm. so they couldn't you know they couldn't see. It's like so they're getting shot at without seeing where they were, and I'm like that's war. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's the, uh, the the team coming from the pines did have a slight advantage, but the other team was more up the hill a little bit, yeah. and they had more cover, in my our, opinion. Uh, so it was our, our one teammate grinder. He had a he had a semi auto, but he was sniping. He was sitting behind that rock wall and just sniping. Yeah. So there, and he was doing he was doing good, but just nobody was moving anywhere. They were just focused on one area. I think there was advantages on both sides on that particular field. Yes and no, yeah. Like, now they were all hard to get to. That's why you had to work like work as a team. Yeah, and I think some of the people got that, but some of the people like were just doing low wolves, and you know, yeah. that didn't really work out for them. Yeah. Uh, now, um, what I want to do is real quick. I'm going to put a map up on the screen. Oh, there you go. That is the game. As you can see, the stars down through the middle, that's where the laptops were, and the, the triangles are where the people uh, were. Spawning. Spawning. And they could, they could traverse either side. And if you yeah. see the blue side, there was like a stone wall and up the hill a little ways where they were, but the other team was actually in this wooded pine area, which is the red triangle on the left-hand side. Yeah. Okay, so they had a little bit more, more to start with, but the other team had more cover once they got out of their spawn. Uh, just my opinion. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna drop that off there. Uh, let's move on to the second game. Ooh, this, oh, or the second was structured game. Yeah, this was a good game. Go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you talk so, about this one. Uh, this one is at no school, but I'm gonna bring up the map for that just so you can see it. This one. Uh, the two stars represent uh, a double drop off point. A drop off point for the cones. There's red and blue cones, and on either side of this building was a, a board with two pegs on it, one red, one blue, that the people had to put their cones on. And yeah. the red and the blue side started at opposite corners and had to work their way in. Uh, I was on the one side of the. Numbskull at the castle, and man, like my side didn't see as much action, but at times it was intense. Like there was plenty of times where guys came up, put a cone, and you heard you heard firing, but 
Like, I did not see any BBs hit. I didn't hear them hit off the building. I didn't see them hit off anybody else. As soon as I saw them put the BB uh, cone on, it's like, uh uh-uh. And, you know, it was clean. Like, I was, I actually had to lay down. Because there's firing all over me. I got hit in the head a couple times. So I'm laying in the grass, like, you know, I'm wearing my rough stuff, red booty hat, red vest. And I just sit there, and one guy on the red side, I believe, yeah, red side, he goes, hey, ref, can you uh, move over? Can you move over a little bit? So I actually did a barrel roll. And so I'm like, you good? He goes, yep. I said, okay. And I sat there. <laughs> well, the first thing that really struck me is when the game started, right before they started, two guys set down their rifles and just had the cone in their hands, and they sprinted. Yeah. To the left side to put the cones on right away. And I'm like, you know, they got the cone on, but they instantly got killed. But, I mean, they yeah. got the point. Yeah. Um, and the final thing on it, Blue did finally win. They had more cones yeah. well, on. They just they just seemed like they worked together more. I, th- I think that was the best thing because there was a lot of lone wolves on the red. They would, they, one guy would run up. Another, one guy would yeah. run up. Instead of a group going up and, and yeah. trying to get cones on, one guy would run up. One guy would run up, and uh, it's it's not the best, you know. Yeah, like the blue was focused on the castle side, well, the big castle side of Nob's Skull, and the red the red team was kind of focused on uh, my side of it, but they just weren't like they were more worried about defending than they were collecting points. I would bring the map up again. Yeah. If you look on the right side of this star, I don't know if you can see my cursor moving. Well, you can't see it. Yeah, uh, I can. Yeah, but uh, the right side is, is where, where the cursor is now, right, moving. This is where Rebel's talking about where he was laying. And the left side now where it's at, this is where he's talking about they had more uh, fire they were putting on there. Yeah. Um, I watched as these guys just lined up and were waiting for people to come through. Yeah. And Blue just seemed to to gel yeah. and get get the get organized and i think that's what at the end the red were starting to get that and they yeah. didn't try to run up in in groups with suppressive fire and things like that i think it was a lot of fun yeah. now, now one of the things that i want you to mention is about the snipers inside the building oh yeah uh so i came up with this uh, being a sniper myself because when you're just playing that map and you're not in the castle, it's not as much fun. Well, to a point, it's because I like shooting up to the guy's second floor and always getting him. But I figured if the snipers are allowed up in the second floor and shooting down, and they can be shot at too. There's no rule against that. But just give them a little advantage. So there was a sniper on each side, on a red and a blue. The sniper on the red got in there. But as soon as he was going up the steps, he got shot going up the steps. <laughs> so, but after a while, I saw the blue guy, I saw the blue team sniper up there. I don't know if he got any kills or not, but I know he would get shot at a lot. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, people were not looking upstairs on the second floor. I know the yeah. red team, when I walked up, the red team, they're all just worried about trying to run up on the right side, run up on the right yeah. side, run up on... And I'm like, they're not worrying about who's shooting and what. They're just individually trying to run up and get that one cone on. Yeah. And without some, like, support, they weren't going to do it. Because I think yeah. Red had four cones on the right side, or the the one side. Well, on your side, how many do you have on that side? Uh, I think they had about two or three. Yeah, because I know... Where they had four on the on the one side, blue had nine on there. So they yeah. were already five ahead. And on the other side, blue had a couple on there as like well. Two or so, three. Yeah, so they were they were keeping them even on the one side, but they were just overwhelming them on the other. Yeah. And I it, it was it, it could tell that they had a real uh, cohesive team to go through stuff. Yeah, like it's weird because the blue side had less cover. Yes, like they had less solid cover. But they were able to, like, because when this game started, you know, I had to try to make my way over to the castle. They all ran in front of me, and they all ran right behind Numbskull. So they were clear of everything. So they had a clear shot to the building. The red team had little obstacles, had little barriers in the way. But 
like, I don't know, it was just weird. Like, you just heard Blue Team yelling, okay, let's cover, cover, cover. And you just heard, and they, and they run back. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was starting to gel for the blue side yeah. uh, then. And I think I saw that change, though, with the next structured game. Oh, with uh, oh, No Man's, no Man's Land. Land. Now, one thing I want to mention that after Rat's Nest, we did a raffle. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, we again, we, thank you, EMR, for donating the stuff. Yeah, they uh, donated. Uh, you could go in, get a bottle of BBs, any weight BB, and you got a, a free shirt, free yeah. EMR event park shirt. Yeah, which was that, fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. I appreciate that. And we did three raffles during the day, which, you know, there was three sets of BBs that people, bottles of BBs that people got, yep. and three shirts. And I'm glad only one of them, one of our guys won. Yes. Uh, like, so, so it wouldn't so be I'm, like that we were trying to stack the deck or something. Yeah. Now, the next game, uh, it was called No Man's Land. Now, I'm going to throw a map up on here real quick, Kev. Yeah, let me know. All right. <laughs> I can't see. This, this map is sort of... When when the people on the screen are looking at this, it the red side is is on the map. It's way on the right hand side, and uh, blue is up on top. And that area where the two lines are in the middle and the three asterisks that are three flag positions, and the red line and the blue line were the max distance that either team could go. So yeah. the red line was as far as the red team could go, and the blue was as far as the blue team could go. And these three flag positions were what they had to take. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, back to us. So give your impression on this game. So you know we we played on this last time, and we did, we just only had the 50 yard line. So I think this time was good with the no man's land. So you they were able to like meet each other, be on the same level playing level. Yeah, the flag is like in the center, and you can move past to a certain yep. area. But you got to stop. And yeah. these were uh, denoted by a, a, a clamp with a big red 16 inch pizza pie pan. Or it was eight, yeah, 16 inches. And yeah. it was painted a color. There were four of them four red on one side and four blue on the other side. And this way, it's a visual cue that, like, yeah. okay, you can't go up there. Um, yes. So originally, I came up with those just as tar like target practice. Mm hmm. So then I, I think you and I were spitball one day. I'm like, wait, we should paint those. So you did. And so this is the first time we really tried them. Uh, we didn't usually try stuff at your place first, but we didn't. So we tried it there, and it seemed to work. Like, I didn't see anybody cross. Uh, I was on the lower end of the field. So, I like, I didn't see anybody even go up to either side's barrier on my end. Well, actually, the... Uh... The team, the one team went. The blue team actually went right to the blue okay. line. Two two guys actually oh, did that. On your side. Yeah, and there was okay. a, a complaint that the guy said he went past the line, but I was standing right there, and the guy was right on the line. And I said, "Yeah, he's fine. I'm yeah. watching him. If he had gone around the particular barricade, yeah. do that, I would have called him out and brought him back." Yeah. Now that was the, the that was one of the only times I heard any complaints all day. Was yeah. that he thought the guy had gone over the line there, but yeah. he actually did not. So, but like during that game, though, what a what a shift! First, like red team got up there. Each team had a flag that they were going to get to in like two seconds. Then the middle one was a little bit tougher, but the red team got the bottom flag. They got the middle flag, and they were holding it, and they were fighting, fighting, fighting. Finally, uh, people were starting to come down lower. And they just slowly start pushing them back. Then they got, they changed, the blue team changed the middle flag. So it was blue, blue, and red. And they were just, they were fighting all there. It was, what a dynamic I shit think, that was. I think the thing of it is, red moved out a mass and got your two, yeah. got the, the bottom flag and the center flag. And even though the top flag was clo as close for the blue team, they were a little hesitant, and they seemed to be pushing down toward the bottom side to try and gauge the people that had already gotten the flags. They yeah. weren't worrying about the flag. And I think once they sort of like 
you know, got together, and there was a, two or three guys that were sort of motivating them. They took the flag. They moved to the second flag. They took the second flag. Yeah. They moved up. They were trying to, uh, you know, hold people down. They, the biggest thing I heard, and you heard this too, is the amount of BBs people were going through in the firefights. Oh my God. Like, like it was each round. Like everybody was empty. Yeah. Like one of our teammates, he bought a brand new bottle, bought a brand new bottle of BBs, and he was like already halfway through by halfway to halfway through today. I think, like, even though they had that one thing where the guy thought he was over the line and he was complaining about it a little bit, I think everybody enjoyed. That game as well as the cone game. Oh yeah, I think like, that I, was I, very positive aspect. They had a very positive attitude on both of the yeah. games. That wow, these are fun. Oh, we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, like I know the map was way off than what we had on on the field, like yep. the starting points. Because one team's like, "Why are we so far away?" I said, hey, "It's not. This is not official. This is just me guesstimating." <laughs> yeah, it's it's it gives you a rough <laughs> idea. And yeah. I like what the one guy mentioned to you about, he, like, he, this, I thought this was just an open play or something like yeah. that, he said. Yeah, well, we'll get that towards the end of the day. Okay. Yeah, the end. But, uh, but, oh, the biggest thing we did this time was we made the maps and we had them at each spawn location. And trust me, when the guys came to the spawns, they were looking at them maps. Yeah. And there was discussions yeah. from the different people. Yeah. That's I'm sorry for that noise in the background. That's my uh, drive alarm, and I know the deer is walking across there at this <laughs> time of night. Yeah, it's six o'clock. It's that's the deer walking across. Yeah. I ain't gonna go look. But uh, yeah, yeah, like because I asked, I was asking people throughout the day. I was like, hey, are the maps helping? And they're like, yeah, we're helping us. Like it, it's giving us an idea where everything is. I'm like, awesome. You know, like those little details will help so much. Yeah, I had I had a lot of people telling me. The, the the cone game they thought it was fantastic it was a lot of fun I had yeah. people telling me all oh, like oh man was this like tactic this like uh you know no man's land game they didn't actually know, remember the name but they said the flag game and I'm like yeah, yeah. they said oh wow this was like intense and I'm like yeah and we also not only introduced the pans on this one but we introduced the portable flag holders yes it, they worked a lot better than I thought they were gonna. And what's nice about these is the last time we actually put up a pole, we put a ratchet strap around it. So that was more stuff that we had to carry yeah. with us. And I think we had less stuff to carry with us now. And I think easier it, stuff to carry. Yeah. And I mean, it was easy to set up and keep moving. Yep. And I really have to say this that we asked the guys, hey, can you pick the laptops up? Oh, can yeah. you pick the flags up? And they actually helped us bring the stuff back. Yes. Because I was, like, limping around pretty good that day. Uh, you know, I was still hurting my knee and stuff like that. So uh, we really appreciate them bringing oh the stuff God. back. You know, yeah. it helped a lot. Like, I was going to uh, get to that later, too, about the players. But, yeah, like, what a what a great group we had. Uh, you know, no drama, no, like, just that little issue, which wasn't a big issue. Now, this next game is the only game which I think – faltered a little bit yeah it's the crates game now i'm gonna throw a map up here real quick and i'm gonna say i think i think we i think we should scratch this one next time yeah what you see here on the screen even though there's two red triangles on the top and on the bottom it's yeah, just that we forgot to put a, a blue in there the <laughs> it doesn't show it but the top one is a little farther back than where it actually is yeah. but where the two stars are is a mound and on this mound are two crates, one red, one blue. And each team has to have two men carry it back to their spawn. And that's the object of the game. Yeah. So now I'm back to us. Um, uh, blue, blue team got it right off the bat. I think the red team just had a hard time. Yeah, well, here's what happened for the red team. And I think this was a big thing. The guy out front started to run. He got it, his foot caught in a hole, did a forward roll, and made everyone stop. Wow. And he sort of rolled and got out of it, and they're they're trying to get by him. And everybody was trying to go the same way. Instead of, like, spreading out, everybody yeah. was trying to, run, trying to run as fast as they could to the crate. And when that guy did that forward roll in front, it 
clogged everybody up for a couple of seconds. Yeah. Which, in that time period, then by that time, everybody's running and they're already getting shot and killed as they're coming up. Yeah. And <laughs> even though everybody was having a good time shooting at each other, the game just didn't really seem to gel with it, everybody. It, it, yeah, that, that game just seemed like it dragged so long. Like, it just, it did not, it seemed like it was like an hour long game. I don't, it just, I, I tried helping out the red team a bit. I tried moving their crate closer to them. But as soon as I started doing that, all the blue team just started shooting at me. Yeah, I think, I think the big <laughs> thing with this is once blue saw, uh, the red team saw that blue had already got their crate, they were sort of demoralized and yeah. they didn't really care if they got it. There was a lot of firefights, a lot of good shots, and the one guy yeah. was telling me, oh, man, I got these two guys on the hill. They didn't even see me. I'm like, there were some good – they're talking about some good hits they got on people, yeah. but they a lot of the guys had no interest in going yeah. up and trying to get the crate. Yeah, so I think this is a, a future on the scratch. Like, not just the crates, but, like, we can probably do the crates again, but I don't think we should do the Marguerite DeVille. I think that's a good uh, location that we might be able to do something else in down the, in the future or Maybe. the field down below it. You know, we can actually yeah. update on something like that. Now, the next one was changed slightly. Yeah. Because at this time, the the people were starting to get ti tired. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show the, the map. And this map... You'll see on the top, the blue triangle is the castle, which is where we were going to start. The red down the bottom is where the other red were going to start. And the blue was able to go into where the blue lines are, but the red had to stay into the town. There were yeah. fl five flag points, and this is how we were going to play the game. Okay, we're back to the video. Uh, yeah. the, can you tell them what happened, though? Uh, so, it was getting towards the end of the day. Uh... It was like what two ish? Well, it was two. It was two thirty five actually, yeah. and the, the game had started at ten o'clock and, and went till three, so five yeah. hours. And it was two thirty five, and Tim, the owner of EMR Event Park, said, "Hey, you guys can go as long as you want." Yeah. But we made a decision that we really didn't want to. Yeah. Well, what started happening was people started leaving. Not to, not not because you know they're having a bad time or nothing, because a lot of people had to go. Yeah, uh, they're not used to playing that late there, so uh, so a couple people are leaving and everything. So I'm like, uh, with these slightly smaller numbers, it doesn't seem like it's worth it. You can tell people were getting tired and everything, so we turned into we used the same flags, but it turned to full field flag game, which was really interesting because the flag positions were not in the center. They no. were like in random spots the, around. The same exact spot in the, on that map. On the map. In the same exact spot. But when we had the flag game before here, we went right across the center of town. Yeah. And we made like a 50-yard line you couldn't pass. But yeah. the thing of it is, this one, you could go all the way around the town. Yeah. It's anywhere you wanted to go. There still wasn't a lot of... There was a decent amount of people, but not a lot. So there, you had a lot more freedom to move around. I think there was... Like, we had lost five people. There was 18 people then. Uh, still nine versus nine, which was yeah. you know, which was good. It was an even set of teams, uh, uh, pretty good, you know, the team. But everybody was tired. Everybody yeah. was slowing down because it was a lot of running most for the last couple well, games. Tell you what, though, nobody slowed down for that game. Yeah, and I think it was all it was full board. What's nice about this is when when you think about what we did, we started at the farthest fields away. Yes. And we went to the farthest field on the left. And we went to the next game was the farthest field on the right. Then we moved up to the next closest field. And then the next closest field. And the last game is right in the town, right next to staging. So, yeah. like, they don't have far to walk. Yeah. Okay. Now, Which, we had a lot of batteries dying. You know, guys only had one battery or dying. One yeah. guy ran out of BBs and the buddy lent him about, uh, you know, a couple of mags so he could finish the day up, which I thought was interesting. One guy... He, his AEG, he had one battery with it for the whole day. He switched up yeah. to his gas pistol using that the rest of the day. Yeah. And so, I said, they had fun. Yeah. I, I know, like, so what we did was we, you know, we brought a table, we brought a tent, we had the bomb props there, we had all of our maps there, basically our stuff there, which the table got very cluttered very fast. Yes. But uh, we taped 
all the maps to the table in in order, hmm. and like everybody, like after they after everybody learned that, they all came up and like, what are we doing next? And like they were excited and they started planning. I like how the people so, were were looking at the stuff yes, that was there too, yes. and I think that that. That made a difference. I think yeah. just to see that made my day. It's like, yeah. you know, this is cool. Yeah. And I know I got a lot of compliments for doing the farthest fields first. Because at least that's out of the way and we're not going back. Because <laughs> I know when we did open plays there, we always go there like last. And everybody's like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah, there are certain, like, we didn't get to the sixth game that we had planned, which was the bomb game. We had which, two... Yeah, we we like had a feeling we weren't going to, but you never know what how people are gonna feel. <laughs> now, see, the thing of it is, this is the third time we've done this, and each yes. game we try to plan at least six games, you know, that we can get to. Now, like yeah. the first time we only did like two, and we just, you know, it got rained out. The second one we only did like three games, and you know, then we just called it quits because it's too cold yeah. and that. So we have extra games. That we can incorporate, you know, incorporate or do again or whatever. Yeah. And like we didn't do the bomb game this time. We didn't utilize utilize the castle. Who's to say we're not going to use the castle and use bombs next time? And yeah. there's a whole brand new area that we checked out while we were there, um, which I forget what Tim called it, but it's in between Drat's Nest and the castle. And we're yeah. looking at a game called Tug of War, and that might be the new Oops Four. Might be Maybe. that you know starting that game as the first game. Yeah. All right. Because I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, like, I know, as far as we know, Tim is, you know, EMR is still open. And that, well, let, me, us, let me give you a little background for a second there. Okay. Uh, Tim, the owner of EMR Event Park, uh, had mentioned that he was considering closing the field. And that was the rumor that 2025 he was not going to be open and this and that. Yeah. And now it's sort of up in the air again. And one of the things he said to us, which if you want to talk about that too, what he told us that we could yeah. do. Yeah. Well, first thing goes, yeah, like he's not he's not doing overplays anymore. Mm -hmm. So he's like, because let's face it, you don't make a lot on overplays because you never know who's showing up or not. But he goes, but you guys. Do what you want. And I like that. Oh, if, if if we say to him, hey, Tim, like September 20th, can we have an open play day and have our game then? Yeah. He might say, yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Have, you know, I'll do it. And it would be a structured open play yeah. that we would advertise and try to get some people out there. And I think because we would advertise it and we would be like the only open play that he's having. Besides yeah. events that he has there, I think we might get a pretty good crowd. Oh yeah, because we had a, you know, we had a few players that showed up saying, "Oh, I thought this was just a regular open play." Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, the whole idea behind this, is to try to do more than one during yeah. the year. So we we've done three in three years, or no, we've done three, three in two yeah. years, three in two yeah. years. And I, I think if we can try to get three again next year. Yeah, because we told Tim, we said, listen, like, you, you know, you know we're, yes, we're allowed to do this again, which is awesome. But we're, we are going to work around Tim's schedule. Like, Good. we're not going to we're not going to say, hey, we want this day no matter what. No, like he he's going to make more money doing events. Yeah, because I so. think the big thing with him, too, is he has a lot of not only paintball events, but he also has a couple of airsoft events that are set up and yeah. LARP stuff. He, yeah. he also uh, embraces the LARP community there and does yeah. a lot of stuff. Uh, so he has MAGFED tournaments for paintball. He has speedball tournaments for paintball. He has regular yeah. paintball events there. Uh, he also has a lot of different airsoft events there on different days, too. So we're, you know, we can try to slide in there on one of those days. That would be awesome, yeah. you know, so. I'd say we try to do it in between LARP and PayPal. Yeah. From airsoft. <laughs> I think that even if the LARP guys were there, I think we could work around them no matter what would happen. Oh, yeah. I don't really well, think it would be a problem. Well, 
no, quick story. When we went up there, the one day to measure stuff, uh, you know, the LARPers were there. And, you know, uh, Tim, the owner of Unimark, say, guys, can you stay out of the way of the LARPers, you know, because they're doing their things. Absolutely. You know, we know what it's like if people get into our area to yeah. bother us. So the one day we want to measure the back part of town, and they just came onto the field. And we just went over and asked them, hey, like, sorry for interrupting you, but we just want to do something over there. Is that okay? They go, where? We're like, over there. You go, yeah, go ahead. They, like, they, cool. didn't, they weren't even near where we we're going to be, so. Yeah, so, you know, just showing them respect, too, like, really helped. I think so. I think this is going to be interesting. And uh, uh, the I think the big draw, too, is this is a $20 open play game. Yeah. It does have open play rules, which does well, bother well, some our, people. Has our open play rules? Well, it's a combination of Tim's rules yeah. plus a couple of things that we add to it. Yeah. Uh, and the biggest thing with Tim's open play rules is a semi only, mm -hmm. no grenades. Only spring grenades. Yeah, and only spring grenades if you do have a grenade, and the only smoke grenades are allowed the ones that he you buy no, off him. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of guys they got like. Been out of shape about that, not being able to do full auto, can't use their grenades, they don't like the semi only oh. rule. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But yeah. everybody had a blast. Yeah. And like, I'm I like, know, I don't know. I know, our, I know our, guy, our team was busting on us about grenades. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like oh, you know, you know, we can use those. They go, they're like, where? I said, your house, get out. You know? <laughs> See, and uh, I think the thing of it is a couple of the guys have the blank firing grenades. Some of the guys have the, the ones with the ram sets and stuff yeah. like that and the primers. And I'm like, yeah, that's still a pyro grenade and he doesn't really want to have anything like yeah. that. Which and there the was, crowd we had wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. There, there was a guy with one of those like volcano grenades that shoots yeah. like a bit. And uh, I wasn't too keen about having that out there because, you know, Maybe eventually, yeah. you know, we'll look at it and see. But I wasn't too keen about him having it out there for that particular day. Grenade launchers are a different story. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, we had a really good group. We had a really oh, good time oh, there. Um, I really appreciated Tim going the extra mile and helping yes. us out and letting oh, us do this, though. Yeah, because I know we, we offered to. But, yeah, like, it's amazing. Like, I... That I just see that he shows that he trusts us, and we're not there to try to, you know, rip him off. So I'm just happy that we can help him, and he helps us. Well, one of the things I want to mention too is like, yeah, you know, the one guy he went in there and got a soda, and I I'm going over to my car to get a a, a dollar for the soda. I want to buy a soda off him, and he, I said, I said, hold on a minute, I gotta go get a dollar out of the car. He's, for, I said, I gotta get a soda. He said, well, can you want? I said, well, I'm going to buy a Sprite or a 7-Up, whatever you got. Yeah. And he said, yeah, like this. He said, don't worry about it. And I come out, and he handed me the soda. He gave me a soda for nothing. And I'm like, nice. he didn't really have to well, do that. When I went in there, uh, one of the guys, he wanted an energy drink. I think it was Nas he had. So he goes, like, can I get a Nas? He's like, Tim's like, the only one I got is that warm one sitting right there on the counter. The guy's like, yeah, I don't care. I'll buy it. He goes, no, no, take it. It's warm. It's in there. Just take it. So, yeah, he gave him. I'm like, wow, that's awesome, you know. Yeah, and, and he went the extra mile giving us the BBs. We only did three raffles. Uh, yeah. He was gung-ho for as many as we wanted to do. And I'm like, I, I sort of felt I didn't want to take advantage of him by doing yeah. like four or five raffles. I thought three was good, yeah. you know, a couple of guys won BBs, which was awesome, and got shirts. That was great. Uh, oh, I think awesome, that yeah. I think that was a good twist, and that'll put a good wor word out there that, like, yeah. hey, man, these guys had a raffle during the thing of thing. You know? It's, it's nothing crazy. Hey, who doesn't want free BBs? Now, you know, this reminds me, like, I, I listened to, like, two other places that ran open plays like we've done at yeah. other facilities like that. And, you know, when they do that, I hear like, oh, yeah, they ran the games. They had like this kind of mission and that kind of mission. And the biggest thing, the one guy said, yeah, they had food, too. And I'm like, well, I, I, I don't think we can supply food. But, you know, I got to decide if the trailer was there. Yeah, the trailer was so there. But, was there. like, you know, like we could supply the food, but you'd probably have to buy it yourself because I yeah. don't think we could afford that. So. No, but, like, you know, Tim had a couple of things. He had a couple of snacks there. Yeah, and was, pe people were getting stuff there. Yeah, so. he was selling a lot. Yeah, it 
He doesn't make a lot of money on the, like you said, on the airsoft games compared to like a paintball event. Yeah. But it actually, I think it did pretty good. Now, yeah. 23 people is not a lot when you think of a, an event. But for what we plan and the scenarios, it was lots of fun. Now, oh my God, yeah. next time if we get 30 people or even, God forbid, 40 people, oh. maybe we'll plan a little bit more extravagant things that people yeah. got to do. That was always our thing when we planned these events. Me and you would talk and say, okay, if we get 20 people, we'll start here and do this. If we get 40 people, we're going to start over here and do this, yeah. you know, and, and encompass a bigger area. And I think that's the big thing. People yeah. are used to come to the to the open play, and you start here, and you start here, and you fight. Well, yeah. we're in the same field, but you're now you're over here in this corner, and this team's over here in this corner doing something else, and now yeah. you got to do this to get. Or you're in a completely different scenario, like in where we did the laptop game. They usually play that in like a, a horizontal, like yeah, it looks like a hor a square. Yeah. Or a long rectangle, I should say. But we played it like a square, and you're on the outsides instead of the long way going in for spawn. I, yeah. I, I think changing it up like that actually oh, yeah. was really good. So yeah, then Also, too, just having objectives. Yes, I think that like, makes a difference. Now, like Team Deathmatch, like basically every round is Team Deathmatch. Yes. But there's an objective. So you're not just focusing on just going after the other team it's trying to go after the team and get this thing and so even though we the props we use laptops we use cones we use crates we use flags now we use flags in two areas but we use them differently in two areas yeah okay but i think that's the thing of it is like we're trying to create props or create games that use the props in a more creative way and i think yes. that makes the difference yeah and like you got a couple suggestions for possible future games, which I kind of like the idea, but that's more extravagant. So maybe we really got to talk about stuff. I but. like <laughs> I like when people are done with the day, and they're coming up or they're telling you after, oh that was awesome, oh you guys did a great job, this and that, yeah. and that that makes makes me feel good. I don't know that oh, we yeah, like, we made so, some have fun. Yeah. So at the end of the day. I walked around uh, to the people that was left. I was shaking our hands. I was like, hey, guys, thanks for coming. You know, is there anything we could do better? Like, is there anything like you think we could have done better at? And i say maybe almost everyone, like maybe one or two people suggested a couple things, but they all said, oh, it was great. No, we never had, we never did games like this. You know, it was good. And, uh, don't change it. You keep going. No, so, I... I had a lot of like people saying they like this game. Oh, they like this aspect. Oh man, it was a blast doing this. I but I did have one guy ask me about, can you guys do a zombie game? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't really see the draw. I, I you know, and you'd have to have everybody on board with it. Yeah. And like when, like if they had when they have it at those big places like Valley Hack, everybody's going there for a zombie game. Yeah. If you announce a zombie game at an open play, you might get half the people sitting out, and yeah. that that might not be a good thing, you know. Unless we promote one game as a zombie game. Yeah, but then the thing of it is, what if you got a whole pile of people sitting out because they don't want to play the zombie yeah. game? So see that uh, I want to have a game that's gonna like appeal, yeah, to just about Some everybody, mass. you know? Yeah. Well, maybe we could come up with something like maybe, maybe we come up with like some kind of zombie-ish game, but not really. We get like a zombie, we, like a zombie twist or something. I also. Like, there are some, a lot of other props, like you had mentioned, that you want to click four pieces and put it together to make something. I like that idea. And also, like, you know, we're thinking crates, but maybe we should be thinking putting something together or carrying a briefcase somewhere or yeah. or carrying a laptop that shows you where to go somewhere or, or things like that. But making the prop do something rather than just grab it and run with it. You got to yeah. get it and use it for some way. And I think that will make the games more interested in it, yeah, interesting like, in the future. I know, like, you know, we're throwing around a couple ideas, and I kind of want to do a, not like, not a mil sim, but like a pre-mil sim. Like a mini sim or something like that. Yeah, like a mini sim, yeah. 
where oh, like just something where you have to go get this whole thing, then you could do whatever and that help you lead to the next thing. And you I know, wanna like I, I wanna keep the name too. Yes. Oops. Yep. Oops could be the next number, it could be the next one would be Oops Four and we'll come up with a new acronym. Uh, yeah. Like net was not enough time because we didn't have enough time in the first one, and the second one was row revenge on weather because we got soaking wet from the first one. Yeah. So this one has got to be another an, ac an acronym for this one that like we're gonna change stuff up or do something else. So we'll, we'll come up with some. Oops, tired. Yeah, in in, in that tired. in that vein too, we've created a Facebook page called Oops Central, and we're gonna try to start putting stuff there about the props, about the games and stuff like that, and maybe get input from people. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that we get some uh, interaction on it. Uh, you know, I got a lot of positive responses from the page being created. People yeah. joined it and liked it, and I posted about it on Instagram as well, and I got a, diff a lot of different uh, responses on that too. So hopefully we get some people that want to get this way, yeah. get there. And what I'm going to do is, like, when we create these games again, you know, starting in 2025, when we get our first date, we're going to plaster the hell out of it all over the place yeah. and try and get some people up there and have a good time with it, you know? Yeah, don't, and please, everyone share it, too, you know, it's, it's just going to help all of us. And I, I think, uh, I think we have a lot of fun doing it, too, so. Oh, I, I, I have a blast. So I think we sort of like beat this to death, but that was our uh, Oops 3 dash net, not enough time. Operation Open Play Saturday at EMR Event Park in New Milford. Yeah. Uh, if you guys get a chance to go to an event there or whatever, check them out. I'm going to put a link to his description in the description for his website. Uh, I'm going to put a link for our Oops Central Facebook page. I hope you guys get on that. And if you have any questions or, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or get on the Facebook page and leave us a, a like and a comment on one on anything in there, okay? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. I, I hope we get a lot of traffic for next one. All right. Hey, as always, you guys have a good night. Stay safe. I'm just here to have fun.